Hey guys, Ken here from Playing Numbers. If you know the channel, you know that I'm very interested in anything involving sports and analytics. So naturally, daily fantasy and sports gambling really appeal to me. I've recently been getting into daily fantasy basketball, and today I'm going to do a quick analysis that may help you improve your performance there. So from what it looks like, the number of minutes played in a game by an individual player is really highly correlated with the number of fantasy points that they'll score. So I'm going to try and determine what the best predictor of minutes played per game is. If you want access to my code, the data, or to just follow along, you can go to my GitHub, playing numbers, and all of the files are in the NBA minute prediction. You can also go on Kaggle.com and find the data at NBA Enhanced Box Score and Standings 2012 to 2018. I'm really only using this 2012 to 2018 player box score file, so you can just use that and evaluate it there. There's also plenty of other data that's really interesting in this file here. Now let's just jump into the code. On the right side here, I have all of the functions that I use to manipulate and analyze the data. And on the left side here, I actually run the formulas. So the first thing we have to do is actually import the modules that I've built over here. The next thing we do is I build the data frame. So I have to take the basic data frame and make a couple new features. We call this feature engineering. And all of these things are related to playing minutes in previous games. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the playing minutes for each game and I want to compare it to the playing minutes in the game before. I also want to compare it to a rolling average of the past three games that an individual player has played, the past five game rolling average, and the past ten game rolling average. I also build fields for the median score for the last three games, the last five games, and the last ten games. I want to determine if a shorter or a longer time window is a better predictor of playing minutes per game. I also am going to look into a larger model. So I look at the standard deviation of the last three, five, and 10 games. These won't be very good individual predictors for playing minutes, but they could help us if we want to run a larger, more complex model like a linear regression or a random forest. All right, so for the first part of our analysis here, we really don't need any advanced understanding of statistics. We can just compare these features that we created with the playing minutes to determine how good a predictor they are. So we're going to be using a root mean square error, which just compares the average differences between the projected and the actual. It ta we take the square of that and then the square root. We only do that to make all of our answers positive. So let's actually go in and see how these things stack up. For root mean square error, we actually want a lower number because that means that there's less error. So from what it looks like, the previous three games here actually have the lowest root mean square error. That means for our sample, it looks like this is the best indicator of success. So from a most basic level, if you want to project the number of playing minutes in the next game, you would just look at the last three games and take the average of that. Now let's go ahead and do a bit more advanced machine learning here. Whenever you're building a model, you usually want to create a training set and a test set. So that's what we're going to do right here. We split the data and we take 25% of it and put it into a test set and we take the other 75% and put it into a training set. So we're not just going to test on the features that we created here. There are a couple other things that we're also going to look at. So we're going to evaluate this model and add in a playing position if they're a starter or a bench player. And that's really it. So in order to evaluate a couple of these different variables like playing position and player stat, we're going to use what's known as dummy variables. So we have columns for each of the available positions, and there's a one or a zero depending on what position they are. So let's say they're a center, it would have a one, and all of the other positions would be zeros. So the first model that we're going to test here is a linear regression model. 
So I built this function and it takes in all of the training sets and the test sets. It fits the model based on the training sets and it projects the root mean square error based on the test sets. So let's see how that compares to our other models. So it appears that the root mean square error is 4.125, which is lower than the previous three game rolling averages. Now this shouldn't really surprise us. The regression model fits based on multiple criteria. And since one of the parameters is the previous three game rolling average, we would hope that it would do better than just that input by itself. Let's take a look at a, another regression approach. This time it is a random forest. Now random forest is an ensemble method where it uses uh, decision trees introduced with a little bit of randomness where they vote on what they think the best or the correct outcome is. So I've already fit the parameters for the model and I use that I used a grid search, which is a, it basically takes a set of parameters and it spits out what the, the optimal state is. So I fit it again using the training data and I use the test set as the prediction data. It appears that it did only marginally better here with, you know, one hundred, two hundredths, one hundredth um, better than this linear regression model. When you have two models that are very close to the same in predictive power, and one is a bit simpler, you generally favor the simpler model. So I would personally use the linear regression if I had to choose between these two models here. I feel like just a little bit less could go wrong specifically using that model. Now, the random forest is already an ensemble approach. It uses the combination of many decision trees, but we can make this, I guess, even more of an ensemble model by using both a linear regression and the random forest, just taking the average of those. And let's see if that actually ends up doing a better job predicting the outcome than each of them individually. So as you can see, there's even less of a root mean square error here. Um, we'd probably have to cross validate this a little bit more to trust it. If you're really serious about getting the best model possible, this is something you might want to experiment a bit more with. So one of the nice things about regression and random forest is we can see how much each feature is incorporated into the decision making process. So I look at the features here and we could see and validate to some extent that the right things are being pulled in. So the most important feature in the random forest appears to be the three game moving average, which was our best predictor up here as well. Uh, the same thing goes with the median. I believe that was the second best one up here. So these look pretty good to me. It's also interesting to look at how much each individual position contributes uh, to the decision making process of the random forest. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is just quickly visualize the outcomes here so we can see the three game moving average compared to the linear regression, compared to the random forest, compared to the combined. So this is a bit messy, but I like to compare this where we look at the projected versus the actual outcomes. The best model would have just a straight line going up. So I think that this is just a, a fun way to see how each model compares. As you can see, the red, it seems to be the closest clustered around a line, and that is the combined model. Next is the green. You see just a little bit less green on the outskirts, which is the random forest. Very close to that is the linear model. And then on the outside, you see the blue dots, which is the past three games rolling average. So hopefully this video helps you evaluate and project the playing minutes associated with each player for each game. If you enjoy content like this, please subscribe to my channel. And if you really like this video, please shoot me a like. Thank you so much and have a great one.